Welcome to the Pick Stops Roundtable After Dark. Kara, good Thank evening. You. Welcome. Uh, I saw the footage there in the new opening of uh, the new favorite city of our featured guest, Steve Apicella, the great New York City. And uh, I want to welcome actually two featured guests tonight. It is Steve Apicella from Strategic DX, your dealer experience, and Ron Overs from Fix Stops Magazine. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. So good to be here. Great to love have the you. opening. Love the opening. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, you know, we're in the mood. We're in the theme. And uh, Roger Conan, good evening to you from H Town. I, uh, Kara, where would that be, H Town? He's down in Houston, not far from me. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. And uh, Kara, I took your advice uh, as well as that of Texas Tim. And uh, I've got my boa uh, tonight. So yes. uh, I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. Now you're 1920s, Ted. Are you Mr. Gatsby? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, we have high expectations, uh, Cara Delane, for this event. So, um, uh, and we're counting on Ron and Steve to come through because they're going to be a big part of it as well. Yeah. Gotta get my wardrobe together. Yep. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, I want to uh, take a moment. I want to thank our exclusive sponsor for tonight's show. Uh, and uh, right over Kara's shoulder there, it's BG Products, uh, Partners Beyond Products. And BG is celebrating its first 50 years in business. And they're such an integral part of our industry. And uh, Ron, I know that you share that as well. Uh, I saw Darren Gresseth uh, <laughs> recently on the cover of your esteemed magazine. And, yep. uh, you know, we're very grateful to BG for all they do, Ron. They're awesome. I'll tell you what, they've just been a wonderful, wonderful uh, contributor of articles as well as obviously, you know, ads, you know, talking about their great products, but really just how better to run your fixed operations department. So they are, they're fully vested in helping you grow your business. Oh yeah. Big time they are. And, uh, you know, also speaking of fully vested, uh, we've got Natasha Fay on with us tonight and, uh, thank you, Natasha, uh, living the feather boa. And, uh, so Natasha, high expectations for you as well, coming up on the event and, uh, maybe for, uh, maybe for someone else in your family as well. There he is now. All right. Ed Roberts, uh, good evening. And, um, uh, Ed was with us last week, Kara. Hey, Kara, when is that show coming up? this uh, Roaring Twenties event. It's coming up quick, Ted. It is September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So you still have time to get your outfits, everyone. And you can get your complimentary tickets now at fixstopsroundtable.com. Wow, a lot going on. September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. That's going to be here, Steve, before we know it. And you know, uh, your lineup is crazy good. <laughs> I mean, it's always good every time, but this one is a blockbuster. It's incredible. Steve, I am I am sensing that as well. We've got some talent we haven't had uh, before or at recent events. And speaking of events, uh, Steve, this is not the only event that we have coming up, is it, Kara? Oh, no. We have many more tricks up our sleeve in the coming months, guys. After September, we have a Fixed Ops Roundtable in November. 
January and May already in the works. So all of those will be virtual and online and three days. So be watching for your complimentary tickets at fixedopsroundtable.com. And we actually just came up for the November theme. Uh, it's going to be tied into the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. But uh, uh, Ron, Kara thought of a way to make this theme extra exciting. So I'm, I'm containing myself, but we can't wait to announce that. And that's definitely going to get some attention there as well, Ron. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Each one has been absolutely awesome. Yeah. A, a lot of fun. and uh, But a big part of our events, uh, Ron, is Fixed Ops Magazine. And not only the service you do for our industry, but, you know, just like with the events, we don't know what the theme is going to be coming up. We don't know who's going to be the next cover story on <laughs> Fixed Ops Magazine. And I know, you know, we waited with great anticipation for that, too. And I know you've got a, a big announcement for us tonight. Absolutely. And as you know, I mean, my job is easy, right? Because what I do is just find the best of the best that, you know, we like to call it the two percenters in the in business world, right? Everybody else is good. Some are great. And then there's the 2% that do far more than that, right? Now, I found one a little while ago. You might have seen this guy, right? He was on the cover, um, you know, back back in the day. <laughs> so Chad was absolutely one of the exceptional guys. But, you know, we just released a new magazine. And um, we, again, searched hard, try to find someone who has been a difference maker in the marketplace, someone who has actually influenced the direction of fixed operations. And it's been great. We uh, we got uh, Les Silver from Dynatron. And uh, Les is just an amazing, amazing man who spent years and years and years in this business and, and in several different companies. But his latest Dynatron software has really influenced an awful lot of dealers and really helped them do a better job of running their business. And uh, Ed does a great job of taking his his brilliance and telling us how to beat the, te the, the you know, technician shortage. So really, you know, we all, you know, talk about the things. But, you know, if you really take the time to read through this article. And by the way, this article is not a, it's one of the longer ones we've had. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's probably about 10 pages long. But it really does go down and break it down and said, what do you, what are you really doing to retain your existing technicians? to really recruit the best of the best so that they stay with you and set up programs that help them stay the, for the long term. Um, he really does a nice job with this. So please take the time to read it. And uh, I think you're going to be and your, your dealerships going to be far better off because of it. And Les Silver has uh, not only influenced so many dealerships, but so many people in our industry uh, who are on the Fixed Ops Roundtable, Ron, yeah. as you know, uh, who've worked uh, with him. Uh, we have coming up in a couple of weeks, David Boyle from Traction worked together uh, with Les. And, uh, you know, the stories go on and on. You got John Traver. You've got, That's right. you know, everybody who they've Les has touched everybody's lives somewhat, somehow. And that's the two percenter, right? Those people influence everyone else. So they don't they don't just do a good job themselves, make a quick buck and leave the industry. Uh, they're involved in growing the business and in infecting others with with great, great products and ideas to grow their business. So it's uh, pretty exciting to see. And uh, it was exciting to see last week, Kara, that when we had not just Ed Roberts, but Tony Owens was on from uh, Ohio. And Tony, welcome uh, tonight. And uh, yes, B top in the house. And uh, we, we learned a little bit behind the scenes about that. And Kara, we also had a gentleman from Australia last week. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I talked to my daughter about that. Is it Vegemite uh, spread it's on Vegemite. the toast? <laughs> yes. Yes. Has she tried it? Yes, she's had it. Yeah. Did you like it? No. We <laughs> no. I have tried it. I don't like it. It's bad. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're going to have him back later in the year, and we're going to get a chance, Steve. We're going to order some of this Vegemite, and we're going to try it here on the show, and we're going <laughs> to we're going to see uh, how we all endure through that. So um, so speaking of two percenters, uh, Steve Apicella, you got a lot going on. Uh, you've become a big name. Uh, we see you everywhere now. Talk to us about what you're doing at uh, your dealer experience and Strategic DX. Thanks, Ted. And grateful for everybody being on and everybody who's in the audience. I see out there, Michael Dean off, man. Hey, buddy. Um, you know, we're really, and I love everything you just said. You know, when our industry comes together, 
when we look at things beyond our own personal pursuits, boy, oh boy, there's lots of good things that can happen. And I love this, you know, and I love the industry we're in. I'm not the guy that thinks everything's wrong. I don't believe that. But I think that there are certain gaps where we can really improve the two things that dealers really desire, and that's revenue and retention. So, and a lot of that for us starts with um, helping our industry transform from a one-time acquisition of a customer into a lifetime customer and filling the gap between sales and service with technology that doesn't remove the in-person engagement, but enhances the in-person engagement by removing the long-standing pain points that have been there for really too long. Um, and that's, that's our focus as a company. Um, we're very collaborative. Uh, we work with dealers and agents and third-party administrators. And um, our mantra is connect the disconnected. And bad news for the industry and good news for us is there's a lot of disconnected stuff. Yeah. So we're connecting those parts of the ownership journey so it feels and acts like one continuous ownership journey before, during, and after the sale the way it should be. At the last Fix Ops Roundtable, you led a panel, and uh, Ed Roberts uh, was on that, Tully Williams was on it, uh, several others, Sean Kingry, Elizabeth Martin, and I really enjoyed that conversation. And uh, a few weeks back when you were on the show, uh, we had a couple questions that we brought out to the audience and to you. And I thought that went over so well that uh, today, as Kara and I were kind of studying up for tonight's show, uh, Kara's put together a couple questions on Strategic DX. And, uh, you know, these are the ones that uh, came to mind, Kara, right? Yep. Yep. So I, I didn't get to make the last show because I went home to see my niece. So I was like, I'm in the dark, Ted. I want to know more about this amazing technology and and I know as a consumer and working in a dealership, there is a lot of disconnect um, between the finance office and the service advisors. So um, my first question here, you'll see on the screen, um, which I think is top priority, is the consumer more likely to service at the dealership they purchase the vehicle from if that dealership has strategic DX? Yeah, you know, and I think it, it, whether it's us or any kind of solution, that really embraces that recurring customer. Um, one of the, the challenges our industry has, it's just an architectural topic, is sales and service are run like two different departments under yeah. one dealer roof. Mm -hmm. And many times, honestly, they don't like each other. And that creates a disconnect in the ownership journey where after a the sales department sells a car, many times it feels like the transaction and therefore the relationship is over. So we have to do a better job as an industry, not just identifying why buy here, but focusing equal or maybe more energy. It's the proverbial actual low hanging fruit the customers you already have is to focus on why return here. Um, it can't feel like step one customer acquisition and step two customer abandonment. And our technology goes a long way to connect that vacancy in the middle between sales and service. So we're not hoping customers will come back. We're inspiring customers to come back. Wow. And Steve, you brand this to the dealership as well. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, it's called your dealer experience by design. <laughs> it's not my experience. It's the dealer's experience. And you know, I feel that it's the dealer's customer and should always be their relationship. Nobody else, including me in the support community or anybody else should distract from that. In fact, I believe it's my responsibility and I think it's everybody's responsibility in the support community to help strengthen the dealer customer relationship as the centric part. Um, we should be propelling that, not distracting with other brands and other names or whatever. And, you know, the, and I see the comments here, which I appreciate. Um, it is sad and it is a great question. Is our great industry's mission to only sell a car and maybe an F&I product or two or to also earn the reoccurring customer? And to answer that isn't in words. It's process and action um, that is either going to earn that or not. 
And, uh, you know, great comment, uh, as I'm watching him as well, Steve, uh, Jeff Daniel at the Maple Hill Auto Group, uh, Ron, whom you know as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeff said those, those self-destructive uh, uh, pain points are, are the most, uh, the self-induced uh, pain points, pardon me, Jeff, are the most destructive. And uh, Ron, you've seen this historically in our industry as well. There's no question about it. You know, before my time here with the uh, publisher of uh, Fixed Ops Magazine, I was agent at, at, uh, at dealerships selling many different products to those stores. And, uh, you know, the dealer says, hey, give me a product that covers more and you put a product in. And then he says, I want reinsurance. And I put a different product in. And then he said, hey, I want a product that costs less. So I found one of those. And then he said, you know what? I need a product for my high mileage cars. I said, sure, I got one of those. I used to have a jacket that could open up and it had all kinds of different things on the inside, you know? And uh, what, about, what about a watch? Yeah, anything you want. I had maybe two of them. So yeah. it was fun to actually go through that and, uh, you know, and do that. But the reality was um, it was a train wreck when it got to the uh, service advisor that said, oh, you bought one of those? Oh, uh, they didn't even know who to call. They didn't know what it was like. You know, the customer had lost his copy of the policy, you know, and everybody was just chasing around trying to figure out how to even, you know, Im implement anything uh, to help get the customer's problems solved. You know, it's a shame. And again, I love this topic. It is what we address is imagine a customer that intuitively came back on their own to the service drive when they needed support. They thought they bought something. They're not quite sure what they have. And they roll into the service drive many times unannounced and say, hey, I bought my car here. I bought some protection products that need some service support. And the position we put our great service advisors in today is unconscionable. Um, they don't have access to those answers without our platform or without anything, even a breadcrumb of what it is. So the service advisor has to tell that customer, ask that customer, happy to help, what products did you buy from us? Imagine what a customer thinks in that moment or says, time out, I bought this stuff from you. Well, thanks. Don't you know? Mm -hmm. And they should know. And, you know, even this puts service advisors at a great disadvantage. This puts dealer brand at a great disadvantage. And it puts great agents like Michael Dean Opmuth who are on here that, you know, represent multiple products. In our industry, every dealership sells products from multiple third-party administrators, every single one. And we have a solution. We've had one for a long time, a digital solution that every dealer has adopted to present these multiple administrator products to their customers. It's called a menu. But what happens after the menu? It's completely broken. Mm -hmm. And that's where we pick up the pieces. The other thing, which is, a, again, a great challenge in our industry, Ron, you can speak to this. How important is F&I revenue and the associated customer benefits and loyalty to a dealer? It's, it's critically important. Huge. It's yeah. gigantic, right? Yeah. So we take all that value and we stuff it into what we call the micro moment of the F&I menu presentation. Shouldn't customers or service advisors on behalf of customers have access to these great products, both what the customer already purchased through multiple administrators and what they didn't buy after the sale digitally on a smartphone or smart device or on a desktop? It's ridiculous that this opportunity remains um, the same because the process is sell it with the car and never sell it there again. And don't worry about what happens in service. We'll figure it out. For me, that's not good enough. And yeah. Steve, it's what Tully Williams refers to as that repeat and referral business that we want. Here you've got the products that ensure that, yet it's broken when it comes time for that customer to come into service. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And again, I don't want to diminish third-party administrators. They provide a critically valuable revenue stream for dealers. Mm -hmm. But the time is over for when somebody needs service that a service advisor has to nav navigate analog anarchy with multiple administrator 1-800 numbers and phone queues and call hold wait times and manual claim processing. It's 2022. Um, the modern day smartphone's been around since 2007. Isn't it about time we start leveraging it? Mm -hmm. And we like to talk about transparency. But if our customers don't know what they bought, 
and our dealers don't know what they bought after the sale, how transparent is that really? Uh, and by the way, Sean Rias on tonight. Sean, you have uh, run away Tully, with the fashion thank you. show. I see because that. Thank you, Tully. Yeah. We've got nobody, uh, Sean, who's been able to keep up with you. And, and Tully Williams is there as well. And Tully, thank you so much. Uh, for your support and all that you do. And I, I'd like that frame around your picture, Tully, uh, tonight as keynote speaker at the event. Kara, we've got another um, another question for, for Let's Steve. Let's go. Yes. So I had many to ask, but my next one here is all about the consumer. Okay. I did a little research about this app and kind of went through it. And I feel like I know the answer to this, but will the customer's app save them time in the service drive and, and how? Imagine that same scenario I just said, which is what happens every day in every dealership is a customer intuitively will go back to the service drive when they need service for the, with their F&I products. And they'll show up unannounced and say, I bought my vehicle here, I bought some protection products, I need service support. Imagine if that service advisor was equipped with a process to scan the VIN barcode or enter it into a desktop where they could then see all the products the customer did buy, even through multiple administrators, and have a digital pathway to service at the point of contact with the customer. Now you take that moment and turn it into what it's supposed to be, a world-class experience between the dealer and their customer. You want the repeat and referral business, you gotta earn it, and you gotta have the processes to be able to do it. But then also when you've got that customer and you can see what they already purchased, how about in the same view, being able to see everything they didn't buy right. and be able to illuminate to the customer and extend that F&I revenue runway far beyond the one-time transaction of buying a car and in the F&I menu. This is something, again, I'm passionate about it clearly. Um, it's missing. You know, Everybody wants yes. to figure out how do we grow and how do we solve what's next? This is something that no matter what the economic reality is tomorrow or the next day, it's critically important to solve this problem. Uh, no you've matter struck, what, the, what the future looks like, we should be solving it. I, I think you've struck a nerve there with the ability to offer those products after that micro moment on an ongoing basis, because you're right. If it's not bought there, it's, it doesn't happen, Steve. Yeah, you know, I love going back to... Everybody knows Amazon and Amazon. Some people think Amazon so departed from the reality of the F and I world or, or the, the automotive retailing world. It's really not because Amazon is chock full of brick and mortar and people to deliver its products and services. Think about it. Um, their method is the reason why they're a trillion dollar plus valued company is because they figured out the desired customer engagement before and after the sale that keeps their customers coming back again and again and again. Without the recurring customer, Amazon is not a trillion dollar plus value company. Everybody on here tonight or everybody watching, did you just buy something from Amazon one time? Or did you do oh, it no. over oh, and no. over and over again? And here's the great part. We can ask Kara that question, yeah. sorry. Amazon <laughs> is not the cheapest resource online. No but they have the most desired experience that keeps their customers coming back again and again and again. This is not the model for the 100% online retailer. This is the model for the brick and mortar dealer that has the unique ability to also locally service their customers beyond selling them a car. That's the very essence that differentiates the brick and mortar dealer from the 100% online retailer. I love this guy, Sticks. Oh, very hey, cool. yeah. hey, Steve. Yeah. Guess what? Six is going to be on the round table in September. I love it. This guy's got a lot to say, a lot of experience. He's excellent. So tune in for this guy for sure. I am very impressed by what I see so far from Earl Six Brown, everybody. So Radiant Ride is going to be with us in September. First time on the round table and uh, fasten your seatbelt. There's some great stuff coming. Carrie, we got one more question for Steve. Let's do okay, it. Okay, one more. And it kind of ties into what we were just talking about when you were talking about Amazon is the consumer is using this app. Now, what do they get out of it? You know, so the inside the application, other than these two critical things, which are directly linked to F&I, which is digital F&I engagement after the point of sale, even with multiple administrators in one view, uh, being able to capture missed F&I revenue after the point of sale and after that micro moment. 
But we also have digital dealer messaging with push notifications, not phone solicitations. Guess what? Those don't work. They're annoying. People think they're fraud. Not random text messages. And guess what? They are random. Unless you've got your dealer's information in your smartphone and your contacts list, it's random. And worse, if you use a text messaging platform and a phone number comes over as 23-09, who the hell is engaging that? Uh, yeah. People think that's annoying and probably think it's fraudulent. Like, go ahead and click on anything random and you just might lose your identity or something bad will happen. Push notifications is the modern way to do it. It's by far the highest engagement rate. It's the thing, you know, notifications are things that we know, maybe not by name, but like you missed a call. You missed a text message. You have the ESPN app and you get a sports score. You have the weather bug app and you get a weather update. Those are notifications. You can do the same thing in our application and narrow it down to single customers, groups of customers, or all customers, manual, automatic, or timed sent messages. What messages should a customer receive after buying a car? How about, thanks for buying a car from us. Welcome to the family. We're looking yeah. forward to being on this journey with you. Why? To express your appreciation and to let the customer clearly know that selling them a car mm. was the end of the journey but we're just getting started. And then rewards, rewards is something everybody, I don't know all you guys closely, but everybody on this panel and everybody watching is engaged in some kind of rewards program and airline rewards, rental car rewards, mm -hmm. hotel rewards like me, cause I'm on the road every week, or it could be a, something as Chick-fil-A or Starbucks or, you know, whatever. But the rewards transaction is brilliant. It goes something like this. The more business I do with you as a consumer, the more points I get, and the more points I get, the more incentive I have to do more business with you. It's brilliant. Why doesn't the auto industry leverage this properly? This is also part of the why return here. Incentivize a customer to be loyal to your dealer. Don't just hope they're going to come back on their own. And, and Ron, I see this also answers the follow-up for the salesperson. Because, Ron, we've always said in dealership, okay, when do we do our first follow-up with the customer? Mm -hmm. Three days, 10 days, uh, or how about, you know, when they got home, right? To make sure that they have no questions with how the vehicle operates. Ron, this actually solves a lot of that follow-up, which, you know, we can automate that now, Ron. Oh, this is, this is absolutely music to my ears because like most of you, you know, we've gotten annoyed with emails. We've gotten annoyed with text messages, maybe even more annoyed with text messages, right? Lately. Uh, and, and now, but, you know, like you said, the little messaging that pops up that tells me, you know, the latest sports score or whatever, and appropriately doesn't stay there forever, right? It just comes up. It shows me the information. I have time to read it. And it dissolves itself. It goes away. It's very respectful of the, uh, the consumer's time. And uh, I think it's, it's a great, great uh, addition for any dealer to have. Absolutely. A, a customer already chose you. You don't need to beat them over the head. You need to educate and inspire them in a way that they want to do. Sean says it right here. You know, I say digital retailing is not the goal. Digital life cycle is the method we need to embrace beyond the one-time transaction. Again, actions and processes speak louder than words. Think about this, digital retailing, and it is value, valuable. I'm not, I don't do it myself pre-sale, um, but I think it's a valuable addition. It's just there to cast a wider net. It doesn't mean lock your front doors. It's just there to simply cast a wider net, whether it's 3% of cars or 5% of cars. Here's the problem. The digital experience for those that do engage it abruptly ends with digital retailing before the point of sale. What does that tell a customer who's buying a car? It says the transaction and therefore the relationship is over. That can't be the end of the frictionless engagement. It should be just the beginning. And you know what we are describing truly is, Steve, frictionless. Brian Benstock talks about it. These texts, these phone calls, they are not at all that. So uh, I am very pleased to announce tonight that in September at the next Fixed Ops Roundtable, uh, we are going to bring back uh, Steve Apicella from Strategic DX. And Steve is going to lead a panel on modern retailing, not just any panel, Kara. It's going to be our second ever super panel. All right. Ooh. So Steve is going to lead that. So get ready for that, everybody. And uh, 
uh, watch out. We've got a great topic coming up, and uh, Steve is going to lead that. Also at the event, we're going to have Ron Overs from Fixed Ops Magazine, and Ron is going to lead the Fixed Ops Magazine panel. A lot of folks that we know uh, and have come to love on that panel as well. And uh, Ron, you've started so many conversations here at the event. I can't wait to see what you have in store for us in September. We'll have something exciting for sure. You wait and see. That's right. And Carol, when is that? Uh, when is that date again? It Let me is. get this one. Let me get it. September twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second. Yes. It's completely virtual. <laughs> and where Steve, do they you're going to give her a run for the money. I like it. <laughs> where do they get their tickets? She does it way better than I do, but I thought I would take that one. <laughs> All right, now, Kara, we just got to dress him up with the wig and with the Amazon collection, and we'll be all set. <laughs> yeah, if, if you just wear this outfit, That's then it. we'll compete. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Do you have I'll a hole in your that. glove? What's going on there? You know, I can't use my computer for the comments and stuff if I don't <laughs> just do this. So I've, did, I've done this for every show, and I've wondered who was going to notice it. This mm. hand is fine, but it's just this one. <laughs> okay, all right. All hey, right, listen, so. before you wrap it up, you guys, I want to say uh, from my chair how yeah. grateful I am to you guys for what you do with the Fixed Ops Roundtable. It's critically important for our industry to bring people together. Right. We don't all have to agree. This isn't about rounding up like-minded people. It's better that we bring diverse people into the conversation to get the most out of it. And you guys do a brilliant job with that. I hope people tune in for our super panel and for Ron's, but the, the lineup is worth checking out. There's such a great lineup coming up. And the more we get together as an industry, the more we collaborate, the better we are. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody, if you missed any part of tonight's broadcast, uh, it is available right away. And uh, see if Steve knows where it is. I YouTube, know get on YouTube, go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yep. <laughs> and be sure to, uh, Steve, if you haven't already, subscribe now to the YouTube site. This way you get an, a push notification, Steve, whenever we have a new video or a new episode with Steve Apicella or any of the uh any of the episodes of the Fixed Ops around there. A soft, <laughs> intelligent nudge. That's what those notifications are. It's smart. Yep. Like it. Super. Well, thank you, everybody. Great, great show tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. And Ron, you. we're looking forward to the, that Fixed Ops magazine. So it's it's exciting. You know, I mean, it really is fun. You know, um, you have Kara. I have Sean Reyes as my centerfold <laughs> this time. Okay. He's got Sean did this great recall article. You know, it's a. And so it's a two-page spread talking about, you know, recalls on your cars. So it's fun, you know, not as cute as Kara, but it is the center of our magazine and it is fun. It is fun to read. So if you're a nerd loving Fixed Stops, please subscribe to, remember it's free, Fixed Stops Magazine by just going to fixedopsmag.com. It's that simple. And, and Ron, that's why I love the resources that you and the Fixed Ops Roundtable both put out because there is no charge. You don't have to pay $400 or $700 to come to this event, Steve, and see the super panel and see the other speakers. It's all complimentary, Kara, and it's online. So anybody can come and we look forward. If you haven't got those tickets yet, everybody, uh, please get them ASAP and uh, join us at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Yep. Thank and you, thank you to everybody who tuned in and will tune in. I see Trevor, Tony, Sean, everybody out there, Timothy. It's awesome. This isn't a community without the community and the leaders in it. So thank you. Well, we appreciate you being on here tonight. I'm glad I got to see you this time and learn more about your company. And I can't wait for the Fixed Ops Roundtable now to see both of you guys again. So thank you everyone for watching us tonight. And on behalf of Ted Ings, Steve and Ron, I'm Kara Delane. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thank you.